and welcome back to Catholic Gay Tube. Today we're doing a low light episode because I was at the laser doctor today and my face, uh, it looked like a zombie person. So we are minimizing the face, trying to maximize the tubes. So we're going to do that. Anyway, uh, Fran Blanche, God Queen of All Mankind, did a video about uh, Nixie Tube power supply. It's a really old video. You should check it out. It's really good. Uh, in this video, she mentions that blue LEDs would be installed alongside Nixie tubes because in low light environments, such as a laboratory with all the lights turned off, uh, the Nixie tubes wouldn't consistently fire because there simply wasn't enough ambient uh, photons floating around enough to start off the Nixie reaction, Nixie functionality, flow of electrons, whatever. It's a cold cathode tube, that's what happens. So you need some sort of external excitation. So uh, they would install blue LEDs because those are like high energy light. So the high energy photons would hit the cathodes and that would um, catalyze the Nixie tube being a thing. For one thing, this means that there's a reason for all those tacky blue LEDs that you always see in those Nixie circuits. Uh, I used to think they were really dorky, but now I get it. I also have tried it and it does look cool, so you know, call me tacky if you want. More meaningfully, it gave me the idea that if LEDs can emit high energy light from like 5 volts or whatever, Maybe they could be used to excite the phosphors of cathode ray tubes without needing actual high voltage. So we're gonna take a blue LED. We're gonna make a little stylus out of it so we can more easily steer it around. And then we're gonna interact with some various phosphors and see if we can excite any of the uh, chemicals that make them up. Before we start, I want to quickly apologize for two things. The first of which is that there might be some focusing issues as the light level changes, and I'm sorry for that, and I will do my best to uh, compensate. The other thing is that these tubes are gonna bonk each other. They're gonna make that sound. I'm very sorry. I know it's annoying, and I know that it, everyone's screaming at me because these tubes are bonking each other. I promise they'll be okay. I promise you'll be okay. So let's get down to business. So this is our test setup. We have a variety of CRT tubes with different phosphors. We're just gonna go in order, counting up. And then we have this uh, blue LED on a pen. And you can tell there's a lot of energy coming out of it because of how wonky it makes the uh, camera behave. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should, at CathodeGayTube, posted a video recently with this tube showing that high energy blue light will cause a camera to distort. This little spot on the tube here is very uh, dim in real life, but it's really bright because the camera is clipping because of the blue light. Anyway, first up is our green phosphor. Uh, it's a P1 phosphor. It's usually used in oscilloscopes uh, before the more modern P31 phosphor, which is a little bit more blue. And we can bring it close and you can see it passing through the phosphor, uh, but it's not really causing any excitation. Looks pretty cool though. This is a 5BP1A, by the way. This was one of my first tubes actually, and I never really use it because it's so gosh darn big, but it's pretty cool. And it only takes like 2000 volts to use it, which is pretty neat. Next, we have a 2AP5. This is the one that I uh, post about a lot because I'm currently working on a circuit that uses it, uh, power supply and deflection amplifiers and stuff like that. So a P5 phosphor is a blue phosphor and that was used in photographic and film applications where streams of data or a series of images from a monoscope were traced onto photoreactive material as data storage. Very weird, very cool. Now it's worth mentioning, <laughs> yeah, there's the reflections again, that's not the, that's not the phosphor. 
uh, that these tubes require a higher anode voltage than their green equivalents, their P1 phosphor equivalents, because the blue phosphor takes higher energy to uh, excite. So let's see if this does anything. Once again, <laughs> oh man, it's kind of hard to tell, uh, but the phosphor is like allowing light to pass through because it's so thin, but it's not really getting excited. We would see some sort of uh, phosphorescence, some sort of lingering glow if it were, but it sure looks pretty regardless. I feel like it's reflecting more light too, I don't know. I don't have any way of quantifying that, but it definitely feels like it's brighter. Uplast is a 3FP7. I did a little demo of this tube uh, using the Catahoula Technologies driver board uh, just to show off this really cool phosphor. So the P7 phosphor was used in radar. It has a blue fluorescence and then a yellow phosphorescence or afterglow. So it shines blue when you first uh, excite the uh, phosphor, but then uh, there's a decay of yellow, which makes sense because for radar, you need that like long sweep and you wanna be able to see pings that show up. Let's check it out. Wow, look at that. The blue LED is enough to stimulate the phosphor to where it will glow. The camera makes this seem a little brighter than it actually is, but you can see that it lasts for a long time. Almost too long. In fact, when I was shooting takes of this, it was really annoying because I would make a... Well, I just did it again. I would make an error with my speech, and then I would have to wait like 30 seconds for the actual phosphor to dim away. Bringing the LED closer makes the beam more concentrated, so we get a brighter initial uh, excitation, and then you know it fades away. We can even do something kind of similar to erasing by just shining the whole beam on the tube, and then that sort of uh, wipes it and makes it so it's all obscured. So. You could take some stencils if you wanted and uh, do some uh, do some art. Here's just the channel, Catholic Gay Tube. We'll just excite that. <laughs> and wow, look at that. Very crudely cut out logo. And we can just see it fade away. It lasts for a really long time. It's actually still visible uh, outside of the camera too. So we'll just erase that. Now that we've established that a P7 phosphor is excitable with an LED, let's look at a bigger one. Uh, I actually forgot what this one's called for a sec. This is a 5FP7. It's the same family as a 3FP7 except it has electromagnetic deflection and focus. It's a five inch thing, and it actually has an octal tube base because you don't have any deflection plates, so that's four less pins you actually need, and you don't have a focus from uh, electrostatic plates. So there's that too. It has a metal base too, which is pretty neat. Let's get those stencils again and see what we can do. Here's the logo. Looks great. <laughs> Wonderful. Here's a little thumbnail. Hell yeah. You heard it here first, folks. 5FP7. Says gay rights. Better yet. 5FP7 says trans rights. In conclusion, even if you're like how I was a year ago, 
scared of high voltage and also, you know, still pretending to be cis, you too can enjoy these very beautiful CRT tubes. Using LEDs and other high-ish energy light sources, like a laser pointer, you can interact with the chemical makeup of the tube's phosphors, even if it's just to draw squiggles and smile, and how gently the image might fade. In general, things can be cute and fun and also important, for no other reason than the fact that you had a small, but very pleasant experience with it. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and happy pride!